Hi everybody. Guess where I am? I'm not in the gypsy wagon. I have it all cushy and warm in here. And uh, me and the dogs have been sitting out in here, hiding out. And of course, they all want to be up on this little big bench with <laughs> me. Um, but what I was, uh, I have a couple things going on today. So, I came outside to get some stuff done because it is beautiful outside. It's only about 65 or well, only about, it's about 65 or 70 degrees and, um, it's not gotten too cold yet. It was cold last night. And it's chilly in here because this little place is in the middle of that. Excuse me, let me move myself a teapot to put me cold down. <laughs> anyway, I'm hiding out. I'm hiding out in the little girl's, in the girl's hideaway. And I'm just out. I don't smoke very much in here because uh, I don't want it to be smoked. I wanted you to, and, and I have like all kind of pumpkin candles and stuff in here. It's very nice. So I'll, I'll, I'll undo the camera in a minute and show you how it's coming along. It's pretty cushy. I wanted to show you this new book. The uh, title of it is Sunset Small Spaces, and it has Jojo Liebler's scrapbook in it. A notebook, Jojo's notebook by Joan Liebler, and she is on a lot of like HGTV shows and stuff. I wanted to show you some pictures and stuff in here. Small inspiration. This is a great picture of this tree house, and they're awesome. Oh, that's the inside of uh, what is it, John? Uh, the Treehouse at Disneyland, which is awesome. This is the inside of an Airstream trailer. If you can believe that. Look at that. Gorgeous yellow, butter creamy yellow, and red, cherry red. Can you see? There it is. There it is. Inside of an old Airstream. One of my, one of my favorites in this book I want to show you is where they've taken... Um, the inside of uh, some little campers like this and made them into a bed and breakfast. So I'm going to find it. It's just a great kitchen. Anyway, this book is all about big ideas for small spaces. And uh, as you all know, I lived in a little camp trailer that was only about 500 square feet um, with my kids. And um, I had to be very creative about using space, you know, as wisely as possible. I love that. This is the kitchen. I want this sink in my kitchen. But I love this wood that they put back there. Um, and uh, so then that got me into decorating small spaces. And... Um, and that's the gypsy wagon. And I have done a lot of other small spaces as well. Uh, like I said, a 500 square foot home that I raised three children in for one thing. And some other little tiny, oh, I love this bunk. Bunk setup. That's very similar to how I did my boys' room. Not that flashy. But my kids, my boys had to share a very small room. And uh, they had a bunk situation like that. Oh, look at these great bunks. Sweet. And I like this. I like Americana. I like red, white, and blue. Where is it? Yeah, right here. Like a... Oh, sorry. I like like a red, white, and blue theme. Um, that's something I never get tired of. And when I change it out, I always end up going back to it. Because um, I just like the freshness of it. It just looks smart. But I guess I can't find that picture right now. Of course. Some great outdoor bathrooms. I have an outdoor bathroom at my other trailer. Um, that was made out of an old tin storage shed, which is really neat. With wooden floors. And, uh, anyway, I'm a fan of small spaces. Um, I like to organize things. And you have to be very organized to live in a small space. But... Uh, there's a lot you can do with it, you know. 
Anyway, I got a little project to oh look at this. Oh look at this. Oh look at this. That's great. That's incredible. We can have a place like that up in our other place in the spot in the desert. I love this by my kitchen too. Uh I had something very similar like this to in the trailer. It's a little corner booth. And I had all fifties with this kind of stuff there, black and white shipping. Oh, it was great. I loved it. Um anyway, that was a nineteen sixty Two um, house trailer that I raised my kids in. I bought it for less than twelve hundred dollars, I think, and worked it over and uh, raised my kids in. Anyway, I got a little project today. I, you know, I got this great tape. I'm just dying to do something with this pink and green, and so I got out some of these pink primary or these pink acrylic colors, this very purpley fuchsia, and. Uh, Brighter pink, uh, brilliant pink, it's called, and baby pink, and have almost a whole bottle of that. And these are uh, folk art and crafters edition colors, and this is a basic acrylic color. You buy these at Walmart. Big old jugs of this paint for a couple bucks. You water it down because it's uh, acrylic and it goes a long way. This is actually violet, it says, but it's kind of like it's violet, I guess, but it's really like a fuchsia pink. And I got this great tape. So, I have one of those wooden, um, it's sitting right outside the door, but I can't really show it to you. Um, I'm going to do a video on it, but it's a wooden, a uh, wooden, ah, uh, one of those booster seat, no, high chair seats from a restaurant. I found it somewhere, sitting somewhere, and it was broken. And, uh, what's left is the front bar. The back part of it is broken out. And then it has like the little front bar with the little uh, place, little strap that goes between the little kids' legs. So since the back is broken off, I'm going to use that for the front. I'm going to take out that funky strap. And I'm going to paint it and use some of this great tape to recycle that door and make it into something really special. Probably a cute little uh, hairdressing seat for Miss Olivia if she ever gets to come back here again. Um, I have another neat high chair that looks just like a beauty, a, a beauty chair, like from a beauty shop. And um, I've been wanting to redo that one for for a hair sewing chair, but I think this one will uh, be very usable. I need to shore it up a little bit because it's a little bit um, unsturdy from being out in the weather. And uh, so I'm going to do that with some wood glue, and um, I'll, I'll show it to you on the on the video. Uh, step by step what I'm going to do to it and I'm just going to piece that together as the day wears on and um, I'm going to do that and then I also might work on that little beauty shop chair uh, just to get a good start on it. Also I have two kitchens of hers that have been sitting out in the weather. I'm redoing the guinea pig room and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, I'm getting rid of the guinea pigs and I'm going to only keep two of them and um, so I'm going to redo that whole room. I'm going to have to clean it very good obviously and paint it and I'm going to re make that into a playroom for her and I'm going to put the uh, all of her kitchen and doll furniture and all that kind of stuff she has like all these little um, big <laughs> kitchen sets and little doll nursery with the baby thing and then we'll also probably keep our new baby in there as well because she'll be coming here soon. I haven't heard from Yogi but I bet she's working on it and I've got to get some money together to buy my baby for my birthday. So um I have to have that baby by my birthday. So um anyway I've been doing that. So I'm gonna do that and uh, I probably will start painting on some of her kitchens because I'm gonna do them real cute like um, that Dutch design with the little tulips and all that kind of stuff and just really deck it out and put cute like lace and little curtains and everything and make it a, a real keepsake from a you know tough tough shed toy outside to a real keepsake in the house that'll be pretty and she can have it for years coming probably pass on to her kids. The other day um Olivia loves this place. This is where she was pretty much raised, and, um, you know, her mom was here when she was born, and, or with my brother, but then came here, and then she's just pretty much been here most of her life, you know, and to her, this is her home, and the other day, um, 
she said, Mom, if the movers ever come, I'm going to tell them just to go away because we don't want them over here. I said, well, the movers don't come unless you have them. She said, well, the movers come and take your stuff. Her little friend just moved out of their apartment complex and, uh, and uh, she sat about it, you know, their little friend moved, but they had like a moving truck, I guess, or whatever. And um, anyway, she's been talking about moving since then. And um, I said, no, the, the movers are never going to come and take our stuff because uh, this is where we live. We live here. Mom will live here for the rest of her life. So we're Papa. And, and um, you know, I'll, I'll, this is where I'm going to grow old and this is where I'll die. And she looked at me real weird and she said, you'll have this place your whole life. I said, yeah, I'll stay here my whole life. She said, so I'll be mine your whole life. I said, well, after I'm gone, the house belongs to you. That's who I'm not going to leave it to. I'm not going to leave it to the other kids. I'm going to leave it to my grandchildren because the big kids will have already, hopefully I won't die for another 40 or 50 years and uh, the big kids will be well set and I'll leave it to my grandkids. And, um, and of course over the years I had great plans for it to fix it up really nice so that it is a keepsake for them for the rest of their lives. You know? The look on the little girl's face when I said this place will be yours. And then I said you never, you'll never have to worry because no matter where you go Mama will always have this home. This is where your roots are, and it'll be your home, and you'll never have to worry ever for the rest of your life. You'll always have a home. And he said, because that's what Papa wanted for us. He wanted, he gave it, to, my husband gave me this house 10 years ago, uh, when we were still dating, because he has another home, and he wanted to be sure that I would have a home, um, and then my kids would have a place. Um, if anything should ever happen to me. And so actually my husband gave me my home 10 years ago before I was ever even married. So I've had that security in my heart for a long time that I would always have a home when I decided to settle down and, and um, you know, not be, try to be so independent and try have to work so hard. Uh, and I did have to work hard, believe me, people. Um, over the next few days, I'm going to be sharing a lot of history with you and probably just to make some things a little more clear, but closer to my 50th birthday, those are things that I want to document and kind of have a record of, and I only want to have to say it once. So anyway, it was just a really neat feeling to see that little girl when the realization came over her face that she does have roots somewhere, and then so I always have one time. That's a person. So anyway, be blessed. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Get some duct tape and do some projects. <laughs> and I'm going to go get more. I want all of it. I want every, I want every kind I got. And I'm going to make a project for every, everything I've got. Of a bunch of cute little organization things that I can do with this. And make it real cute for the little areas in the house that, you know, you need the storage in. You don't need to necessarily go buy a bunch of storage bins and stuff got cardboard boxes and some duct tape, you can do a lot, and I'm going to show you how. All right, I love you. Be blessed, and have a wonderful day. Sorry for that rambling, but just out in the place where I've been contemplating some things, and it came to me about to share. Oh, and go get this book, Sunset, Big Ideas for Small Spaces, because even if you don't live in a small space, the John Lee Boyer's Notebook, it has some great organization tips in it that you can use in a large space as well. And I have gotten many years of mileage out of this book, so leave you me and many ideas. Peace, be blessed, and bye-bye.